Namaskar and welcome to the lesson on Riot Against Torture. Friends, to start with, the term torture may be defined to be the action or practice of deliberately causing somebody to severe pain, causing great physical or mental suffering. In the study of safeguards against arbitrary detention, the right against torture occupies a substantial area. The atrocities and brutalities occurring in the police custody and the accountability of the officer concerned for such acts became a need of the hour. Various cases of the lockup deaths and atrocities upon the arrested and detained persons are the talk of the time in almost every state of India, there are allegations of tortures in the police lockups and use of third degree method in the police interrogations. There does not appear to be any machinery to effectively deal with this particular allegation. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Article 6 declared that no one shall be subjected to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. There exist the constitutional provisions of right to life and to produce an arrestee before a magistrate within a period of 24 hours. But the reports of the custodial violence went on unabated. Custodial violence, including tortures and death in the police lockups, strikes a blow at the rule of law. Custodial tortures are serious as those are committed by the persons who are supposed to be the protectors of the citizens. The protectors become persecutors and ultimately traitors. The acts are committed under the shield of an uniform within the four walls of the police station where the victim is totally in a maze. The protection of an individual from torture by the police and other law enforcing officers is a matter of deep concern in a free society. The issue concerning police atrocities on the face of the guaranteed fundamental rights of the people under Article 21 and 22 of the Constitution of India became an important subject of study, not only in the academic circles, but also as a threat in the practical day-to-day -day life of the people. And hence, it is pertinent to ascertain the so-called tortures and also the criminal law, the constitutional law, and the judicial reaction in the cases involving tortures. The constitutional law and the criminal law against torture has not been defined in the constitution or in the penal laws. Torture of a human being by another human being is essentially an instrument to impose the will of the strong over the weak by inflictions. The term torture is the other side of the human civilization. Torture is a wound in the soul and there is no way to heal it. Torture is despair, fear raise or hit the lawmakers while making the Indian Penal Court in the year 1860 anticipated the possibility of practicing the egg of torture by the police. 
to the persons in their custody and enacted section 330 which goes as whoever voluntarily causes her for the purpose of extorting from the sufferer or from any person interested in the sufferer. Any confession or any information which may lead to the detection of an offense or misconduct or for the purpose of constraining the sufferer or any person interested in the sufferer to restore or cause the restoration of any property or valuable security or to satisfy any claim or demand or to give information which may lead to the restoration of any property or valuable security shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to seven years and shall also be liable to fine. Section 330 of the Indian Penal Code is an anti-torture law and has been in force since the year 1860 till death. The fundamental rights are inviolable and occupy a place of pride in the Indian constitution. Article 21 provides, no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to the procedure established by law. Article 22 lays down that no person arrested shall be detained without informing the ground of arrests and he shall not be denied the right to counsel and defend it by a lawyer of his choice. Further, under the article, an arrested person shall be produced before the nearest magistrate within a period of 24 hours of the arrest. Article 20, Clause 3 of the Constitution lays down that a person accused of an offence shall not be compelled to be a witness against himself. So, these are some of the constitutional provisions to safeguard a person against torture by the state functionaries. The Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 enacted the powers of the arrest of a person and safeguards against tortures. The police officer arresting a person must follow the requirement as laid down in the provision. Section 46 provides the manner and method of arrest. Section 49 prevents a police officer to use more restraints than is necessary to prevent the escape of the person. Section 50 enjoins that every police officer arresting a person without warrant must communicate to the arrested person that he is entitled to be released on bail and may even arrange sureties for his bail. Sections 56 and 57 require the arresting officer to produce the accused before a magistrate within a period of 24 hours of arrest. There are other provisions like section 53 and 54 and section 167 which are aimed at affording procedural safeguards to a person arrested by the police. Section 176 requires the magistrate to hold an inquiry into the cause of death of arrested person while in custody. These are the various provisions to safeguard a person from being tortured by the arresting authorities and that are laid down in the constitution and the criminal law of this land. There is also the dimension of judicial reaction in the matters against tortures.
the decisions of the Supreme Court in the area of the personal liberty, arrest and detention is a happy trend as wrongdoer is accountable and the state is responsible if the person in custody of police is deprived of life without due process of law. Courts have been granting exemplary damages in its writ jurisdiction as public law remedy. The purpose of public law remedy is not only to civilize public power, but also to assure citizens that they live under a legal system which aims to protect their interests, preserve their rights. In Sunil Batra versus Delhi administration, AIR 1980, Supreme Court 1579, the Supreme Court responded to a letter by Sunil Batra, a prisoner who was being subjected to unbearable physical torture by the prison authorities. The prisoners has scribbled the letter on a piece of paper and managed to have it sent to Justice Krishna Iyer, the judge of the Supreme Court. The learned judge responded to the letter to relieve the prisoner. Torture would include not only physical torture, but also mental torture. In Rudul Shah versus State of Bihar, AIR 1983, Supreme Court 1086, a habeas corpus petition was filed under Article 32 of the Constitution. That is the first case in which compensation has been awarded by the Supreme Court in exercise of writ jurisdiction. Rudul Shah has been arrested on the charge of murder in 1953 and was acquitted in 1968. He, however, continued to languish in the castle dungeon until 1982. The jail authorities said he had been adjudged as insane and what measures had been taken to cure him. It was obviously a case of custodial torture of mental and physical infliction resulting into illegal imprisonment due to sheer carelessness and carelessness of the state functionaries. The court not only set him free, but also asked the state to pay rupees 30,000 as compensation. And this is an interim measure without prejudice to his right to file a civil suit for compensation. In Bhim Singh versus State of Jammu and Kashmir, AIR 1986, Supreme Court 494, the scope of the above remedy was further extended to cover cases of unlawful and malicious detention. A state legislative assembly member was unlawfully arrested and detained in order to prevent him from attending the assembly session. Let us also mention cases of granting compensation in exercise of rich jurisdiction that became active where the High Court started exercising this jurisdiction in awarding compensation of custodial tortures resulting into violations of the right to life without due process of law. In Kaminiwala Talukdar versus State of Assam, 1997, Criminal Law Journal 874, the Gawati High Court found that the police did not attempt to apprehend hardcore terrorists alive despite ample opportunity and killing the victim in the cold-blooded manner. It was held that the act of killing was against the guarantee of life under Article 21, which was deprived of without due process of law. A compensation of rupees 1.5 lakh was awarded to the mother of the petitioners. The High Court further held that the state shall adjust this amount from the salary of the delinquent police personnel who caused death of the son of the petitioner. In the study of the right against torture, the Supreme Court's decision in D.K. Basu versus State of West Bengal, AIR 1997, Supreme Court 610, 
is a landmark judgment on the issue which became a law of the land on custodial violence, including tortures inflicted upon the arrested persons by the police and remedy thereof. The Chief Justice of India received a letter written by the Executive Chairman Legal Aid Services West Bengal, drawing his attention to certain news items published in the Telegraph dated 20, 21 and 22nd of July 1986 and in the Statesman and Indian Express dated 17th August 1986 regarding deaths in the police lockups in custody. The letter further stressed the necessity to examine the matter in depth and to develop custody jurisprudence and formulate modalities for awarding compensation to the victims and their dependents for atrocities and the deaths in the police custody and to provide for accountability of the officers concerned. The matter was registered as a writ petition. While the matter was pending, the Honorable Chief Justice received another letter written by one Ashok Kumar Johri on 29-7-1987, drawing his attention to the death of one Mahesh Bihari of Pilkhana of Aligarh in the police custody. The letter was also treated as a writ petition and listed along with the writ cases of D.K. Basu. The Supreme Court speaking through Dr. A.S. Anand J. expressed anguish on the very act of torture in the following words, no violations of any one of the human rights has been the subject of so many conventions and declarations as torture, all aiming at total banning of it in all forms, but in spite of the commitments made to eliminate torture, the fact remains that torture is more widespread now than ever before. Custodial torture is a naked violation of human dignity and degradation which destroys to a very large extent the individual personality. It is a calculated assault on human dignity and whenever human dignity is wounded, civilization takes a step backward. Flag of humanity must on each such occasion fly half mast. The court further observed that in all custodial crimes, what is of real concern is not only infliction of bodily pains, but mental agony, which a person undergoes within the four walls of the police station or lockups, whether it is physical assault or rape in the police custody, the extent of the trauma a person's experience is beyond the purview of law. After reviewing various precedents of Indian case, as well as the position in some foreign countries regarding the steps against torture in the police custody, the court observed that transparency of the action and accountability perhaps are two possible safeguards which the Supreme Court can insist upon. The court held that using any form of torture for extracting any kind of information would neither be right nor fair and therefore would be impermissible being offensive against Article 21. It has been observed that state terrorism is no answer to terrorism. It has been required that to bring transparency and accountability, an officer arresting a person should prepare a memo of arrest at a time of arrest in presence of the arrestee or a respectable person of the locality from where the arrest is made. The court has declared the law of arrest memo to be followed in all cases of arrest till legal provisions are made 
in their behalf. In concluding the discussion on this right against torture, we have reviewed various legal provisions, the constitutional mandate with the anxiety of the court expressed in different judgments of which D.K. Basfu's case is very significant in this area. After this judgment, the parliament brought about changes in the law by enacting criminal law amendment in the year 2009, inserting sections 41b, providing procedure of arrests and duties of the police officer making arrests. Section 41c is about opening control rooms in all the districts where the arrested persons and detail must be notified. Section 41d is about the right of arrested person to meet an advocate of his choice during investigation. Section 50A is about the obligation of the police making arrest to inform to a nominated person. Section 55A is about the health and safety of the accused person, giving a duty to the person having custody of the accused person. And Section 60A has laid down that no arrest shall be made except in accordance with the requirements enacted under the Code of Criminal Procedure or any other law providing for arrests and not otherwise. Various provisions that are inserted and incorporated in the Code of Criminal Procedure as stated above are in response to the decisional law as laid down in D.K. Basu discussed above, which was passed with the objectives of bringing transparency and accountability in the working of the arresting authorities and the various obligations to observe, giving rights to the arrestee regarding torture. We can hope for the best and let the provisions work and let causing torture be ended. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.